huh, play it? crazy hard. I don't really stop to think about it, but yeah, I mean, we've been in this phase of recording the record for two and a half weeks now, and been here for 12 or 14 hours working a day. Yeah, so that's just normal for us. It's super fun, and it's like what we think about all the time. The second chorus still? Another stack on the full set, yeah. I'm always waking up to bad news in the morning Yeah, there's bad news going round I get the feeling that we're not gonna make it Cause our time's running out Okay, let's do Monster Rush. Yeah, you know, it's been interesting because we've sort of been writing everything for the last year or so, even a bit longer with some of the songs. We sort of started with this one idea in mind that maybe was a bit big picture with everything, but as everything kind of transpired and as the record kind of morphed into itself, we realized it was a very personal record and, you know, we decided to call it Monster House. It felt like we were almost trapped inside the record we were making and it's, it's, it's kind of all about, you know, self-abstraction and self-distortion and those, those personal aspects that come with just, you're not really sure where reality starts and ends. back and forth for me a little bit on the two outside toms. We'll just see how far we get with everything, kind of, before we decide a final deadline. But obviously, vocals take a good amount of time. You know, drums and vocals always seem to take the longest with everything. U87. This is the NS10 speaker that I was talking about upstairs that we use, and a vintage D12, which is an AKG microphone. AEA. R44, Sennheiser 441. It's kind of like almost Eastern sounding. So these are just a few of the synths that we brought in from our other space uh, that we've been using pretty much almost entirely on this record. This is just a Wurlitzer 200A. 
Moog Voyager, Korg MS20K. Electro 4D, it's been on the road many times. This is a Korg Monopoly. This is a uh, OB6. The SH101. Those are the synths. Perfect, man. That's it, dude. You're done. Yeah, let's just do that chorus too before the bridge. Let's just let's just do a few where we kind of roll. Fly. Yeah, just double check it. Right? Something about this place. Well, downtown Los Angeles, there's definitely a story behind most of the pieces and the artwork in here, which is kind of cool, which I feel kind of gives the vibe to this place. Oh, yeah. Slow day. Should I still drink coffee? Some days I wish you still drink coffee too. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that doubt will uh, sink you. You don't want things to happen that slow down momentum because when they do, they could just be totally detrimental. Yeah. And I mean, some of these tracks we had started working on around this time last year and just ran into a whole headache of problems for a few various reasons and just that was what ended up becoming like the um, Propaganda EP. It's just like three songs instead of it was supposed to be like this record. Um, but in a lot of ways, it was a good thing, you know, because it took us fully back to the drawing board and we just had to chop up a lot of songs and just reimagine them and come at them from a completely different mindset.
Yeah, it does seem a little rushed. That was the first half, too, so let's just do it again. What's up, dude? Fire. How are you? Our buddy Joe came in and did some saxophone stuff as well. And uh, yeah, just kind of the same thing, just stacking and layering ideas and parts and really, you know, creating something unique. <laughs> I mean, luckily, right before the pandemic hit was kind of when we hit a place where we were like ready to start kind of getting things out for mixing. Yeah, I think there was probably like three quarters of everything was done and there was yeah. going to be like three or four songs kind of hanging in the balance of trying to figure those out. But yeah. We were in a pretty decent spot before the pandemic hit, but it was just the way that the timing of when that actually happened was strange because we still knew that we had a way like a little bit of a ways to go to the finish line and then trying to overcome that very last obstacle when it feels like you're already over the hill and then there's just another obstacle that presents itself it can be a little bit challenging yeah it's a no it's a no brainer it's a no brainer it's a no brainer it's a no brainer able to take off in a larger way it would could mean a lot for us it could give us a lot more opportunities and we can repurpose those that money that comes in from a record doing well and and make more records and help other bands make records and help other artists become successful and that's what we want you know we want to grow a whole community around what we're doing it's like ideally a larger thing than just us and just this record you know that would be the best case scenario is so it's so we turn it into empire you know what I mean it's not just a moment in time it's the rest of our lives being launched from this moment forward you know what I mean that's how I always think of it Let's go. 